Hello everybody and welcome to Web Factory 2010 Tutorials. In this video tutorial we're gonna talk about writing values to a PLC using Smart Editor. And we're gonna build a simple Smart Editor project that will allow us to use a button, a combo box button and a toggle button to write values to our virtual and imaginary PLC. So let's get started. I'm gonna create a new project in Smart Editor and I'm gonna name it Smart Editor Write Values. And in our new project, I'm gonna make the page a little bit bigger and I'm gonna place three controls. So from the bottom category under the toolbox panel, I'm gonna select the WF button 1 control, which is a standard looking button in Web Factory Smart Editor. Now the second control is going to be the WF combo box button. And this is a drop down button basically. And the third one is going to be the toggle button. So I'm going to place all these controls on my page and I'm going to make them look a little bit better. And these are our three controls. And in order to test that the values are written to our signals, so to our PLCs, we're gonna put some labels and some value display controls. So we're gonna head into labels and we're gonna take the signal information label so we can display the name of our signal and we're gonna go to input and output controls and from the output controls folder we're gonna select the numeric display simple style. So here we have a simple setup that will allow us to see the name and the value of our signals. So whenever we write the signals using one of these three controls, we're gonna see it right over here. So let's start configuring our controls. The first thing we're gonna do is select the label, go into the signals properties and enter the set point to signal. Now this is the signal from our demo database that we're gonna use to write the value to. So this signal basically we're gonna imagine that is linked to a PLC and whenever we write the value to set point to signal it's gonna be written into that PLC. Okay so we're gonna display the name for the set point to signal in our label, as you can see, and in our numeric display, we're gonna go to signals again, and I'm just gonna copy and paste set point to here, and we're gonna see the value that set point to has. So these two controls will allow us to check if our signals are written. The next thing we need to do is to configure our buttons. So we're gonna start with the WF button 1 control and I'm gonna link it to set point 2 and whenever we're pressing this button at runtime we're gonna make it write a value. So this value is gonna be 1. So when the button is pressed the value 1 is written to our set point 2 signal and is gonna be displayed by this control over here. We're gonna select the second button, the toggle button right now. And as you can see the toggle button in the general properties has two different values. Well this is because this button is gonna toggle between these two values. So we're gonna have the first value 2 and the second value 3. So whenever we press this button once the first value will be written to our signal, so to our PLC. If we press it the second time, the second value 3 in our case will be written to our PLC and we're gonna link it to the same set point 2 signal. And now comes the more difficult part and by difficult I mean we're gonna have to make a little bit more settings. As you can see in the signal category over here in the property inspector when we select the combo box button we have the signal state name and the write state name. Well, the signal state name allows us to link a signal to our combo box button and this signal would change the state of our combo box. But for this example, we don't need any states for our combo box. So we're just gonna focus on the write signal name. 
So I'm gonna put here set point two and if we go down we're gonna see a right items button and if we click it we can add basically the items from the drop down list. So I'm gonna add one item and I'm gonna place a symbolic text and this symbolic text is gonna be value and let's say it 4 and the value of value 4 will be of course 4 and I'm gonna do it again go to general and write value 5 for our symbolic text and make the value 5 so basically we have two items in our drop-down box I'm gonna confirm this and we're gonna test this right now now before building our project we're gonna make sure that all our of our buttons have symbolic text to display at runtime so we're gonna select the first button now, go into the general settings and type a symbolic text well our first button will input the value 1 to our signal so I'm gonna write as a symbolic text here value 1 so I know what value this button will write to my signal I'm gonna select the toggle button and under the symbolic text property I'm gonna write values 2 and 3 so I know that this button will write these two values and for our combo box button we're gonna leave it just like this now we're gonna build our project and I'm gonna get back after the project is loaded into the web browser okay so our project is loaded and as you can see here at runtime we have our label displaying the name of our set point to signal which is the signal we have from our PLC we have the value displayed over here so this is the value of set point two and as you can see right now the value is five although we haven't written it but this was the value when our application was loaded so let's test our buttons and see if we can write our values to the PLC so I'm gonna write value one first so I'm gonna click the button and as you can see the set point two value is now one now let's try to write the values 2 and 3 and toggle between them so I'm gonna press once our toggle button and as you can see the value 2 was written to our set point to signal and if I press it again the second value which is 3 will be written to our set point to signal and of course we can toggle between these two values by pressing the button and moving forward we're gonna focus on our drop down button so I'm gonna click this little arrow that will expand my drop down and in our drop down list we can see we have two values 4 and 5 to be written so I'm gonna select value 4 value 4 is written to our set point 2 and I'm gonna do the same with value 5 and value 5 was written to our PLC signal so this is the easiest way to write signals to a PLC using Web Factory Smart Editor. So let's see now what happens if we have security writing enabled. For now, as you can see, we can easily read and write signals to our PLC and to our set point to signal which comes from the PLC. But let's try and complicate things a little bit more and show you how the security features in Web Factory Studio and Smart Editor work in the case of writing values to a PLC. So I'm gonna close the browser and open the Web Factory Studio. You can see here the simulation server is active. I'm gonna select the group inside my simulation server and if we go to the read write mode tab we can see that the write and read are unsecured. This means that we can easily read and write at runtime without having to log in with a user which has the proper authorizations. So I'm gonna change this setting and put it to write and read normally which means secure and I'm gonna go into the settings and make sure that under the general category the security is enabled next we're gonna go into the user manager and make sure that we have a user which has the possibility to write to our signal and in this case 
we have the test user and the test user is not part of any authorization groups as you can see and we're gonna leave it like this for now to see what happens if we don't have authorization to write our signals so we're gonna get back to web factory smart editor and in our application at design time I'm gonna drag on the page a user login dialog and you can find this control under the security category in the toolbox so I'm gonna drag onto the page the login dialog I'm gonna size it up to match the size of my other buttons and I'm also gonna take a language selector because our language is German and we might want to change it to English before running our application I'm gonna go ahead and restart the web factory server because we have made modifications in our studio project so I'm gonna restart the server and build my smart editor application now our application is loaded and we're gonna try to write a value to our set point to signal now I'm gonna press all these buttons and you can see that no user is logged or the user has insufficient user authorizations in our case we haven't logged in yet so we cannot write any values so I'm gonna click the login dialog and I'm gonna log in with a test user I have logged in successfully and if I press now the buttons you can see that we cannot write the values to our PLC and this is because my test user doesn't have the proper user authorization so I'm gonna get back in the studio and I'm gonna make this user a part of this authorization group named administrators and if we go further into the authorization groups we can see that the administrators group has the privilege to write signals belonging to the group one and our signals they all belong to group one so I'm gonna save the configuration and I'm gonna restart the server and I'm gonna also reload our application so I'm gonna make sure that no user is logged in and we're gonna try to write the value so of course we cannot write the value because we are not logged in yet we're gonna log in with a test user and now because we have added our user to the administrator write group whenever we press a button the values will be written so this is one of the most important security features in web factory 2010 being able to set a group to be read and write protected or unsecured so in this video we have seen how easy is to write values to a PLC using Web Factory Smart Editor and we have also seen how easy it is to enable and disable sec the security features from Web Factory 2010 Studio. Also, remember that whenever you have the security enabled in Web Factory Studio, you will also have to have a user that has the proper authorizations to write the signals so here we are at the end of today's video tutorial I'm gonna meet you next time when we're gonna talk about more cool and interesting features of web factory 2010